I'm Gary Lyon and welcome to Access All Areas. The Crows have put space behind them at the top and a team that was sharing second position before this round, the Giants, they've got some problems. G'day to Damien Barrett and to Matty Lloyd. Yeah, they have, Gaz. They've got multiple major problems, haven't they? And uh, the main one right now, though, is Toby Green, who's going to be missing some footy when the match review panel decision comes down this afternoon for what he did to Rance on the weekend. And it's that a stage now, Lord, where they just cannot trust him to, to not do the actions that uh, we're now looking at here. Yeah, tried to fly the flag here on Alex Rance, who'd bumped Stevie Johnson, but just crossed that line. He's now been suspended in round four, five, six... And now round seven. So what are you doing? You're coaching him? What are you doing? Uh, not much, to be honest, Gary. Like, I've heard talks of suspending him for another week when he gets back. But he'd lose his two weeks. He'd be absolutely gutted. Yeah. He's just got to, you've just got to keep working with him because he's an elite player. He's a great performer for them. And uh, he's just got to talk to him about you know, just not crossing that line, which is hard to do in the, the yeah. heat of the moment. Now, the intention is right. Yeah. He wanted to get in. He wanted to fly the flag. No one else seemed was flying the flag for Stevie, yeah. so he charged in, and then he just... Do you need it. to, though? Do you actually need to? Does it make any difference? I mean, yeah. Stevie had the free kick. Rance... Yeah, that's the point. He, he really shouldn't have done it. Then you got the ball. He's a game. liability. I mean, Lord, as, as he's gone through the rap yeah. sheet there, I know it's not all of those have resulted in, mm. in suspensions, but uh, if he, as in he, Leon Cameron, can't go into final series mm. knowing that uh, he's going to have the, the, the full faith in his player to, to not do the wrong well, thing. It's a problem, guys. It is a, it is a problem, though. It's undeniable. He's got to back himself. This is uh, Leon mm. and his group mm. to throw their arms around him and get the best out of him yeah. because he's worth... He's, well, he's most valuable, valuable player there. They've got other issues, though, um, uh, Lord. I mean, it was going to be a big test. MCG against another contender. Uh, 20 points up at quarter time, and uh, the rain came and so did their spirit. Yeah, they've lost their total confidence as a team, and, and the big question they'd be asking themselves is when it started getting wet, uh, the Giants, uh, sorry, the Tigers wanted it more and they went missing. Just look at some of these errors and they've stopped the switch. So the, that switch kick, that run, that carry, the teams aren't letting them do it anymore. Yeah. And they've lo they're lost for answers at the moment. And you make a mistake like that yeah. and then the inclination to go there again is diminished and mm. they've lost. Oh, they look a bit confused to yeah. me. We've spoken in recent weeks about whether they go, they, they tend to try and go fast, fast, fast. Mm. And yesterday it looked like they were going too slow and conservatively. And Lord, obviously with that, that one of six being uh, the, the win strike, Great in, in the last seven games. They've had two draws, mm. Geelong Hawthorne. I'm just trying to look at this a little bit glass yeah. half foolish in that you get to round 18, completion of, and they're still third right. on the ladder with players to come back. I, I know what you and Gaz are saying, but it's not a complete disaster. When you're sitting with the double chance at this stage of a season, you're still going okay. It's a tough last five games they've got, though. Cameron Canelio back yeah. uh, in the next week. It's possibly. just the way they're playing, though, Damo. It's been six weeks, uh, but they do get some good players back, but their depth players are being badly exposed. They just don't want guys like Mzungu uh, yeah. and other players like that. And Stevie J is going to come under some pressure, and DeBoer is mm. not the yeah. answer. So no. they've got issues. The team they played, I mean, let's give credit where yeah. credit's mm. due. This society have lost six games for the year. They've lost two by big margins. Yep. That's it. The other four mm. were nine points and less. And that, you know, that well documented where they went through and lost the games they shouldn't have. So I just think they're the success story of the comp. And they had to regroup, didn't they, at mm. quarter time yesterday? Yeah. It just wasn't working. The scoreboard hadn't got away mm. from them. But the way they turned it around mm. instantly and then controlled it from that moment on. Leaders, uh, led by, you know, Cochin yeah. and Martin and, and, and Rance. So. Yeah. Um, no, they're in good shape and they're going to contend. Yeah. As will contend. Melbourne guys. Yeah. Your boys, they've they really come good, haven't they, Lordo? And uh, now they've got some games and, and some form back into Jesse Hogan mm -hmm. and, and Maxie Gorn, who have both covered, uh, carried injuries this year. It's pretty important for, for what now lies ahead in these remaining five games. Having long-term injuries, I think your first game back's fine because you're running on adrenaline. The second and third are really, really tough. And I think what's great for Melbourne is both Max Gorn and Jesse Hogan are now into their third and fourth games back at AFL level. They're only going to get better now. Mm. And with Viney back, Gary, yeah. on the weekend, that inspirationally was. Jack set the scene for this whole match. Mm. Within you know, the first three or four minutes, he set the scene. And they were up for this contest. Yeah. I mean, um, Oliver was fantastic again. I thought Hibbert continues to be behind Tom Mitchell, the best recruit of the mm. year. He, he He's been so significant, hasn't he? Not only the way he plays, Dame, but... I'm told the spirit, right. uh, the fact that he's galvanising and that, that people sort of gravitate to him. But but he's, he, and then it was pointed out to me today, let the left footers of he and Hannon and yep. Salem out of the back half helped. I mean, it's something that Hawthorne have been doing over mm. the journey mm. as well. No, he's been a wonderful pick-up. So they're in contention. No, that's good to see. Do the final 10, 12 minutes of the Collingwood West Coast game sum up the Eagles, Lordo, for, for, the, for the flat tracker um, description that they loathe and really hate when people give it to them. But when they're nearly four goals mm. up, and should have been four goals up, when Elliot Yo streamed clear late in the game to, to what would have made it a, a three-plus 
plus goal deficit with only seven minutes to play. Explain and, this. That's what you're talking about. Well, how, how, do you, how do you miss it? How do you celebrate it, uh, as we're about to see now, going through before it actually goes through? And then how do you then concede that scoreline with the time left? That celebration tells you that your head is way ahead of where the game's at. Like, he's thinking as he's kicking that, mm. what, what celebration can I go with? Instead of thinking, if I take another bounce, he, I drag him out, I go over the top, we make a... Uh, yeah. well, I mean, I've been... Does that one act sum the club oh, up? Where it's at right now? I don't a, mean that nice it's too dramatic. But... No, but it's nice for you know, to put it into a box. But, I mean, it's 26 points, at, I think, at the start of that last quarter, though, mate. And that Collingwood did have two men down. Yeah. So, Varco and also Darcy Moore not playing. So, well done, the Pies. Brave win, but uh, they blew another one on the West Coast yeah. Eagles. And it makes the whole Nathan Buckley coaching yeah. situation mm. even yeah, more interesting. I mean, yeah. they are playing for him. Yeah, and the guys yeah. who spoke out most publicly and passionately in, in support of him backed mm. it up. Mm. Taylor Adams, yeah. the Gowley, yeah. Trelaw. Yep. So um, they've got issues, uh, the Eagles. Brad Scott, uh, this is old style, 19, late <laughs> 1970, early 80. This is Ron Barassi in his flared top, given it the Jared Healy at the SCG. Well, it doesn't happen very often. Players, the modern day player getting sprayed, it happened uh, plenty of times, Gary. I'm sure when you first started and the start started my career, where Madge, he said, if you get pushed out of the way, one more time, I'm going to come down there <laughs> and speak to you in person. So uh, it was a big spray. Uh, Majak did a lot right. I thought the centre bounces, he did some really nice tap work and beat Bell Chambers. It was around the ground. He was just beating okay, the one-on-one. So on that's one. the question for both of you guys. You, know, you watch the Kangas closely, Damo as well. So I'll conclude you in this. That's Majak's first real crack at yeah. being the number one ruckman. And the, what we're seeing here is happening you know, late in the third quarter, is it simply a fact that you know, that's his first go and he, he tired? Yeah, yep. I think you're right. But so the, the fact that this is now happening eight years into his AFL career, yeah. which is yet to get near 40 games, it's an issue, guys. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But take that aside. I mean, you're but can you take it aside? Well, when you're, when but you're you don't dealing... bring Goldstein back, do you? Surely you give Majak another I the rest think so. of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Give him a chance. Uh, look, the, the points that he highlighted there, guys, from what I've been told from mm. North Melbourne, uh, with the being pushed off the ball, mm. his numbers are actually good compared yeah. with Bell Chambers, but the effect on the game with clearances particularly and those uh, being pushed aside is the issue. So you're persevering with him though? I would, yeah. Right. Um, another interesting talking point out of this is Carl Hooker, who played forward, struggled first three quarters, kicked four in the last quarter, yeah. and this is Dan Nielsen. Nielsen. Yeah. What do we think? My, my immediate reaction when I had a look at this this morning for the very first time properly is it's bullying, and but the, but. AFL footy allows for bullying in, yep. in the proper sense, in the footy yep. sense, yep. Not, not any other sense. My question to, to Carl was... It's complimented was, in some contexts. Would he do it to Robbie Tarrant? Hmm. Would you be brave enough to go back and do this to Robbie Tarrant? Now, he, he, his response would be, well, I wouldn't, because it probably wouldn't affect Robbie, who's an experienced performer. Just on it, again, North's got bigger issues to worry about than what Carl Hooker does to them, but they were really annoyed with it for, for just putting this on the, on the record. They, they were not happy with how they went for, for Nielsen, how he went for Nielsen. But, Lotto, you gave it a context. Hmm. He missed a couple of goals before three to quarter time, and, and North was equally vocal and yeah. demonstrative yeah. toward him at that time. Yeah, they? they were giving it to him yeah. and then his Which first shot in, in the sense. last quarter yeah. they were giving it to him so that fired him up but I think the slap on the head he's probably taken that one a bit far but mm. I don't mind it Gary yep. you're on top yeah. you're trying to um, yeah, kill yeah. a young fella's confidence and that's what he was well, trying and, to do. and when I talk bullying I don't want anyone to jump on this nah, uh, uh, Johansson got bullied for yeah. four weeks mm. and he yep. had to find a way yep. and now young Dan Nielsen it will be mm. dealt with a similar thing well, well the cats bullied guys by the, the crows in that um, footy sense of bullying on, yeah, on Friday well, night yeah they got pushed and shoved around a little bit and um, I just reckon they Stanley, and this is all in the space of a very short period of time in the third quarter. I mean, Stanley, harsh on Buse, I thought was nearly their best player on the night. Uh, Motlop, not so harsh on. I mean, Mot, guys like Sloan thrive on seeing these sorts of things, these little weaknesses that appear in the. I mean, this is Motlop, you've got to take that before. Mm. I mean, it opens you up. So, bully, I don't know whether they're bullied, but they were asked a physical question and. They didn't uh, handle it as well as they have in previous games. I, I loved it from the Adelaide Crows. I, I've, I've sort of, we've all doubted them, even though they're on top of the ladder. We've all had our doubts about them, but they made a real statement. I mm. thought they really hunted and were up for the fight. And for Geelong, it started in the ruck. Uh, here is some of the aggression side of it. First bounce, let's target the Kings. Let's target Dangerfield and so on. And I think where they've been beaten in previous encounters with Geelong is at the contest. And they yeah. won that convincingly. Yeah, and they structured up yeah. differently. Uh, Lord, we were there on the night. Their forward stayed deeper, and yeah, you know, they went after a Danger and, and Sloan, and sorry, Selwood as well. But do you like that? Um, it, yeah. is, it a, is it a key to playing Geelong from? Here I think on? it is. Probably more so that man there, Joel. And yeah. He's he's showing a bit more of an indication that that can affect him in some way, shape, or form. I mean, they're still great contributors, but I, what I, rattled? You say? Or, um, or? No, it just takes his mind yeah. off the single-minded approach to footy. He then starts to go back at the 
the opponent. And any time he can get his mind off the footy is a great thing. Now, uh, he, he can still turn around that 40 with that, by the Gary, way. Gary, can I ask you about Geelong's taller players? Yeah, So it can. starts yeah. in the ruck, Smith and Stanley yeah. underperform, but also yeah. where Hawkins is at and those yeah. type of ways. So Stanley, Smith, Blitzarves, Hawkins, I bunch in the same group. You could probably put Harry Taylor in. These are your big... Uh, supposed to be your most imposing players, mm. and they're not. That, uh, that quartet, I don't see. Tom Hawkins has got a. He's a bit more, but he's out of, shape, mm. out, of out of form, and he's playing deep, so he doesn't have as big an impact. But uh, Smith and Stanley, they're not imposing mm. in physical. And, and look, they're still second on the ladder, so yeah. they must fit in somewhere. So, so well, they can't change that now, can no, they? No, they can't, can't change. So it. what do they do? Just work with what they've got. Well, they have. And, and, and they you're saying it's going to come up short, though. I think it will. Yeah, yeah. they'll turn around and throw their form at Simmons Stadium. But with those four, or particularly probably three of those guys, would be more comfortable at Simmons yeah. Stadium than, than other grounds. Greg Swan at the uh, Brisbane Lions. He's a very political man. Uh, Lord, will no doubt ask for the uh, entitlement to a priority pick for the, the Lions form. But I would have thought that the form they're starting to show, and particularly against Carlton on the weekend, that uh, AFL's just got to say no. Yeah, Hipwood, Shackey, uh, Witherden. Uh, the list goes on and on. They're playing some very good football and they, they uh, beat uh, Carlton convincingly yesterday. And oh, round 23 yeah. looms, guys. North yeah. Melbourne versus Brisbane Lions. Priority the, on the, the win, loser or... becomes a winner or the winner becomes a loser. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're not going to manufacture that game. They won't, but, but that's going to be the outcome of uh, that uh, game, we'll... the way it's shaping right now. You're dead right. And, uh, gee, that Brisbane side, mm. I mean, they, they're not getting a priority pick. Mm. They've no, got they can't. a huge amount mm. of talent in there, and rightfully so. And Fags is doing a good mm. job in bringing it out. Um, Clayton Oliver, all remember Clayton Oliver that has copped an enormous amount of heat when he did or didn't get clipped on the chin. Well, Sam Petreski Seaton will, will cop similar heat. I mean... He reserves it, doesn't he? I mean, well, he, he, he got brushed here, but... So he doesn't get a fine for that? Well, they don't, they do don't they? Do they, they? Well, they occasionally do. I, I'd be surprised if he did and others mm. haven't, but he got brushed. I you mean, don't go fine. to ground, that's what we're that's, saying. Yeah. You just wouldn't go to ground on that. I mean, he got a free kick out of it, but you don't go to ground. Another uh, behavioural issue, I think, when yeah. it comes to being uh, contacted is, is Rhys Matheson, yeah. who has been highlighted before by other players and other coaches even, Lotto, but he's got a, a knack of getting the free, uh, the free kick paid high, mm. and he uh, can contort that body into a, into a way that convinces the umpire that he is. Well, I'm not sure Joel Salwood, Gary, has ever been spoken to by a coach about what he does, but do you think a young player like Rhys Matheson should be spoken to by Fagan saying, you're getting a bad reputation I would. I mean, yeah. that first one was a bad decision by the umpire, right? Like, it was just a bad decision. This one, not that so much. I mean, that one's more long yeah. ball. But the first one's a bad decision. Mm. So what happens then is the umpire gets reviewed. Mm. All the umpires look at him. He gets embarrassed for making a bad decision because of what Matheson did. So the next time out, makes mm. life more difficult for Reese. Yeah. So I think your fags has got to knock it on this. Swans, 10 of the past 11, did it on the weekend without uh, Tippett, as they've done for some time. Sam Reid also out. And Callum Sinclair, yeah. Lordo, stands up. Can he do this again? Oh, well, he was best man on the ground. He went back to knee full level, dominated, was kicking bags of goals. And he's playing as a forward. In the past, he's been a ruckman. Mm. Is this as much about Sinclair, which is in credit to him, mm. or is it about Jake Carlisle? Uh, Jake's positioning was extremely poor. I just thought that he gave Sinclair too much of a run at the ball, and also he played forward so he could nudge him under the ball. But well done. Uh, first time he's played with real confidence uh, to yeah. kick five. Could mm. be a breakout. I know him. when they were charging the West Coast Eagles, and there was so much focus mm. on that, Newey. He was greatly yeah. underappreciated. Yeah over there. So if he can get his best form heading towards September, it might be a bonus. So does Tippett or Reed get their spot back, you think, before the well, year's out? Oh, yeah. Tippett certainly not. Mm -hmm. um, and then it becomes an issue yeah. whether you bring Reed back in. And, and is it to come down to Reed or Sinclair? Is that what you were asking? Yeah. And yeah. I would... There's not, not a space for both of them. Oh, I, don't, I wouldn't have yeah. thought so, no. no. no mate, about... if, you, if you don't get your job done properly here, yeah. would you like this sort of reaction from Lordy or I, <laughs> uh, as teammates of yours, just to point out that you're not getting it done? He got a falcon. He did. And so there's a reason falcon. for this anger about the sea gas. But I, I have seen you go off and I have seen you do this <laughs> to people you work with where you just absolutely <laughs> give it to them in an uncontrollable manner. And <laughs> it is unusual, though, isn't it, to, to see what he's doing there to Taylor Jure. He's shown some good yeah. uh, nows to come and try and calm him down, but he couldn't uh, calm him down and cop that nasty spray there until Roughhead came over. Lordo, uh, it was out of control. Put the towel on his mouth there to say, you know, close your mouth. Uh, your James mouth Sisley. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> like it from James Sisley. You don't use that profanity or that language yeah. towards a player. So, I know, heat of the moment again, but uh, you wouldn't want to see that again. No. All right, time for our lift hard-hitting moments, and I've been behind the eight ball on this one, but I'm confident this... Uh, First up here is uh, Br 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 Cross, Cross, yeah. there. The knee to the head is severe. Oh, mm. That would put most people off for a week. Mm. Look at yep. him jump back to his feet. That's oh, you come back right there, guys. What about this? Uh, Mills and Acres come together here. No, uh, uh, yeah. 
nothing given there. Not bad. I mean, two very brave players, but I'm not sure that's been in mind that day, mate. Oh, oh so I've got a good hard. chance here, I have. And it takes a lot to put Franklin down, but uh, Jake Carlisle uh, did a good job of it. Uh, like cutting down a big tree there, and uh, Big Buddy hit the deck. Probably yeah. Jake's only win of the night. Yeah, well, I think you might have got that one. Very nice work, boys. A very big weekend of footy as we get down to the business end. Business end. Thank you for continuing to make us the number one footy site in the game. We'll be back next week on Access All Areas. Goodbye.